Hello, Malty McWellian Malt Marketing Marinettes. And thank you to Mike Halliday <coughs> for the malt mention. This is Ralphie Review 926. I'm Ralphie. We are in the Bothy. That means we're about to have a malt moment. <coughs> and my malt of choice for Ralphie Review 926 is an independent bottling of Lefroy. Let me introduce this Berry Brothers and Berry Brothers and sorry. <laughs> I knew I knew it, but I'd forgotten I knew it. And therefore I'd forgotten it, but I've now remembered it because I've had a look at the label. Okay? Berry Brothers and Rudd. I was thinking Berry Rudd and Brothers. Right. I got myself confused. These things happen now and again. It's called a senior moment. If you're not senior, it's not happened to you yet. But let me assure you, it will happen. Ask a senior. They'll keep you right. What helps is a nice, tasty, phenolic single malt. I shall pour myself a glass of this. Oh my goodness. Nectar. Pure nectar. This is an independent bottling <clears throat> called Williamson. It is in fact Lefroy, and the name Williamson comes from an ex-manager of Lefroy called Bessie Williamson, who acquired a bit of a reputation as being one of these rarities, a female distillery manager, um, which she got through um, merit and tenaciousness. <laughs> and other reasons to, but hey, who knows what the truth is? Anyway, just to introduce this, where's my steampunker? It's distilled in 2014, bottled in 2021, 449 bottles, single casks, you see. This is the great strength of the independent bottlers. Occasionally you'll see a single cask bottling from an official bottling outlet. Say, for example, a distillery shop. Their distillery-only bottling can frequently be a single cask. But officially... Distilleries seem quite reluctant, many of them, to bottle single casks because they, quite frankly, can be a bit too singular. But when we buy into single casks from independent bottlers, it's what we're looking for. We've graduated on from your generic, easy access, supermarket shelf single malts, which is generally where we start. And because our palates are becoming more experienced and because we are becoming more adventurous on our malt journey, we tend to come to these bottles. And particularly if you're a fan of Lefroy, I think that you're going to be in for a very pleasant surprise. Um, the phenolic blast of TCP savouriness it's already coming out to meet me from this glass, and I've not even nosed it yet. <clears throat> anyway, the details. Cask number 05057. Oloroso. And um, it's from a butt. Naturally, when you're going to get 449 bottles of cask strength whiskey, um, you're going to need a butt sized container to manage that amount. It's unchill filtered, it's natural colour, it's from Isla and it's bottled at a very impressive 61.8%. Why is that? Simple. Because this whiskey is only about six years old. What does that mean? Well, it means that the raw spirit driven phenolics are going to be very much intact because they haven't broken down over the years of maturation due to oxidization and one of the reasons is that 
in the early years of a new make spirit going into a cask, there isn't a lot of oxygen in there. You need the slow evaporation over time, the angel share as they call it, to create that air gap which draws in the oxygen which accelerates the oxygen of the con oxygenation of the contents whilst in their process of maturation. This, by the way, is the reason why relatively few old phenolic whiskies, and I'm talking 20 years plus, 25, 30, 40 years, have any sort of substantial and significant phenolic component to them unless it's been years engineered back in as part of the maturation process. And if I was to relate this experience to an official bottling, any official bottling from Laphroaig, I would describe it as roughly similar to lore, but this has got more sensation range, it's got more singularity, because lore is a batch of Laphroaig, this is a single cask. It's simply the cask and the content that's doing the talking, and the cask is a pretty good one. In fact, it's very good. On the nose. Something slightly confectionery. It's almost like concentrated barley sugar and then immediately, absolutely immediately, you get that scorched earth TCP medicinal intense characterful Laphroaig peatiness. Do you know, it wasn't that long ago that people didn't want to buy Laphroaig because it was horrible tasting. During Prohibition in the 1920s in the United States, Laphroaig whiskey continued to sell, not as an alcohol, but as a medicinal tonic for people with a nervous disorder. Yeah, I've mentioned that a couple of times now in this channel. But I'll, if it's worth mentioning, it's worth repeating, I'll mention it again. First taste. <clears throat> um, of all the peat monsters out there, I would describe this as a Godzilla of a monster. Um, the intensity of the phenolic is enhanced by the sensation range, which even neat. There's so much flavour that even the alcoholic burn <laughs> doesn't really get noticed, although it absolutely tingles and numbs the tongue. The amount of flavour locked up in this dram is simply extraordinary. It's phenomenal. This is an absolute force of nature. You can buy lore, and lore will give you a taste, excuse the pun, of what this is like. But official bottlings cannot and do not do this. They should, but they don't because they don't want to shock the palates of the consumers and the informed, experienced customer is not a priority to them, particularly when you look at who owns these distilleries, distilleries like Laphroaig, they're corporate multinational, they're too remote from many customers to really care. And I don't mean that as a criticism, I mean it as an objective, objective observation. You might find something like this bottled as a distillery only bottling, but really we come back to the independent bottlers to actually provide whiskies of, of this calibre. If you're a big fan of Laphroaig and you're, you're wanting to go to the next level, right, this is the whisky you'd go for. I'm going to have to add some water to this. Mop mates, I have no choice. I must. Anybody that's trying to drink this neat is absolutely wasting their time. And I'm going to add 
two teaspoons, that's 10 millilitres. You need to get access. There's so much concentrated flavour, you simply can't unpick it. You really can't, not even with the saliva in your own mouth. You need to add water, otherwise you're just wasting your money, wasting your time, and frankly, you're wasting a good bottle of whiskey. I'm just telling you, but you need to know. Simples. There's an old, grinding, repetitive old um, folklore out there that we should always drink whiskey the way their master blender bottles it. That is so much bullshit. I'm surprised that in this day and age it even gets mentioned. I really am. People who are saying this sort of thing do not know what they are talking about and frankly if they're drinking whiskey neat they are happy with a shortcut abbreviated event which rules out the complexity and, and what the, what the whiskey is capable of delivering. It's as simple as that. It's sharing the knowledge you see malt makes, it's what I'm here for. On the nose, there's much more development of dried fruit, particularly sultana. The barley sugar's in there, a little bit of syrup, dry syrup, and uh, and then the phenolics, and then this whole, I was going to say honey, but no, you're not really going to notice any honey in this because of the phenolic blast. It is absolutely raw simply because of the young age of the malt. The cask really helps it because already I can tell, having the first sip, although it was a complete sensory overload, that the sensations as well as the flavours are quite dominant here, particularly the sensation of sour and bitter. Not a lot of sweetness, just enough in the background, but it's the sour and the bitter that really help to deliver the full force of that phenolic complexity. Huh. The cask has done a wonderful job, an excellent job. This is a really good sherry cask, clean, fresh, probably wet. No sulphur in this sherry cask. No, not a bit. Of, not a bit of it. Some lovely brown dried fruit notes. We're getting more raisin now in with the sultana. There is a, quite a lot of green camphor, menthol, medicinal notes as in lozenges. That cough mixture that um, you get for cold remedies. The concentrated old fashioned stuff with all the mixed herbs in it absolutely right in there. Um, it's it's a force of nature this bottle, an absolute force of nature. I'm going to add a drop more water, drop more water, so I can give you a few more tasting notes. This is another teaspoon, that's three teaspoons of water, but hey, it's over 60% volume. And it takes it, you see, the more you add a little bit of water, without drowning it of course, the more you actually open up the concentrated, locked up flavours. Which is why, if this was bottled at 40%, no chance, no way would you get the same experience. Because those flavours are already gone due to their dilution. It's when it's concentrated in cask strength form, then you add water, you have this temporary moment lasting an hour or so where the flavours are chased off the alcohol by its dilution with water, the weakening of the physical bonding process of these, this fabulous array of naturally sourced chemicals locked into the ethanol molecule because that's what alcohol does best, apart from give us a little bit of a buzz, but just a bit. Final taste before the malt mark. Wonderfully old school. That bitterness really starts to encroach over the palate 
as a sensation that starts to swamp the flavour slightly. But the way you get around that is simply to leave the whisky in the glass for another 20 minutes. This is not a whisky you're going to rush. This is a whisky that no way, no way would you waste this in a cocktail. Oh, please give me a break. L leave that for your standard bottlings. Leave that for Laphroaig Select, the most abysmal presentation of Laphroaig there has ever been. The If you want to, I mean, taste them side by side if you've got a bottle of Laphroaig Select. The difference is phenomenal on how good a single malt can be, can be compared directly to how bad it can be. In fact, if I've got a bottle of... Here in the bothy, no, I don't. Yes, I do. Actually, I do. Oh, oh, oh. Actually, do. I mean, here they are. Lafroig Select, supermarket. They'll be charging over the odds, and then suddenly they'll have a big deep discount, more if you've got the loyalty card. And you might start here, and if you're put off your first bottling, no wonder. Because it's a very, very poor ambassador for Lefroig. Very poor. But it's bottled at um, 40%. It's got the branding bling. People will go for it. It looks like Lefroig, and therefore people's imagination will start to feed in flavour notes that they think is there. But this, this. Where's the pedestal? I need a pedestal to put it on. This will do nicely. I'll do as a pedestal. This is a whole different league of Laphroaig, far superior, infinitely superior, but like all from the cask whiskies, they've not become ready sanitised, super branded, flavour diminished, flavour dumbed. These kind of bottles here, you, you need to know your way around allowing whiskey to open up and understanding the extra challenges in the palate that can exist from such phenomenal casks. And the sensation range, the sensation intensity is really delivering that further phenolic clout coming out of this. Uh, and it really is something else. Oh, excuse me. Hang about. What is it? Hang about. Come on, say hello. Hey, cause look who's here. Orlando's, Orlando's away at the moment. So we've got Fluffy the cat. Hello, Fluffy. You're not going to say, you're going to give give them all makes a wee wave. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. Meow. Meow. <laughs> I'll let you down now. He's checking the bothy for mice. I'm not complaining. <laughs> Th this is a whiskey you spend hours with, but you can't have it with another whiskey. It's go oh, right, who who've we got now? Alright, hello Billy. Come here. This is, uh, this, this is my other cat, this is Billy. He's the bigger cat. He's the boss cat, aren't you, Billy? You're looking for mice as well? You just want to see where your brother's been. Look, in the malt mates. Woohoo! <laughs> right, off you go. No mice. Yeah. Shut the door on the way out. The savoury note, the bitterness, the slight saltiness in the fish finish is what defines this as, as an outstanding version of Laphroaig. I haven't really tasted anything quite like this since the 1990s. And I think at that point it was a Cadenheads bottling. But um, th th it's been an absolute joy and a pleasure. Good luck finding it 
um, you're really going to have to look at the smaller retails because retailers and uh, their little hidden alcoves. Another thing I'd conclude by saying is, see the bottom of this bottle. Can you see that there? Cask sediment. That's what it is. Cask sediment. Very fine particulates of oak cask and charcoal. That's all it is. Nothing to worry about. In fact, it's just a sign of quality. Bot mark. I dream of Lefroig's like this. 91 out of 100. Integrity malt mark. I'm Ralphie from the Bothy. Look forward to seeing you shortly for Ralphie Review. 926 extras in which I shall be giving more experience, wisdom, insight into how, I go, how you go about sourcing independent bottlings of whiskey with what's available where you are because you need to get your bearings, you need to know the knowledge because some of the bottlings are not so good. Other bottlings are exceptional. Um, it's, there's not many places that you can find out the information you need to reduce your risks when you're purchasing. Anyway, more about that shortly. Join me again.